All right, so the last step of uh, getting your character onto the rig is going through deformation setup. So all we need to do is click on deformation setup, and this is uh, kind of where it needs some explanation. The tool allows you to have two different poses. Um, from my production experience, what usually ends up happening is you get a model that's modeled in a specific pose, but that pose isn't the ideal pose for rigging. And so what we've come up with here is what we call rig pose, but it's essentially a T pose. So as you can see in the image, this is kind of the ideal rig pose. Everything is nice and straight and uh, hands and feet are world axis aligned. Now they don't need to be aligned to uh, the local rotation axis, but they're just straight. So anyway, you can go ahead and hit create rig pose. Now as a little bit of a helper, it will ask if you want it to put um, the character in a t-pose so it would basically try to do this for you and then you can go in and tweak so bring up this little window where you can save your rig pose once you're finalized but it did a pretty good job um, everything looks okay everything looks nice and straight let's say though that um, the ponytail was not like this let's say that the ponytail was actually let's go down to our custom joint chains Let's say that the ponytail was actually modeled in a way oops, where it was curved, but we wanted it to be straight. So this is where you could do that. So say uh, originally you had positioned your joints like this to match the model, but now you're like, well, that's not ideal. I actually kind of want, want those to be straight. So now what you can do is actually just go ahead and straighten them out in the rig pose. So let's go ahead and hit save rig pose. Now it's going to ask us if you want to skin this mannequin. Now if you have a model you can just hit no, but if you don't have a model and this is going to be your model temporarily for the game or whatever, you can go ahead and hit yes. And so actually skin weight our guy so that we can get him in the uh, Unreal Engine. You'll notice he goes back into his initial pose. This was the model pose. In the reference pose manager up top, we can switch between rig pose and model pose. Notice that the feet are at different angles, the arms are at different angles. In this case, the ponytail is at a different position. If you need to reset these at any time, you can go up to reference pose manager and reset rig or model pose. It's going to warn you though that you can't do it in this mode. You need to go back to skeleton placement. Now if we had an actual mesh here, let's turn this guy off so we can actually select these guys. If this was our an actual model, we have a built-in paint weights tool into the uh, tool set. And there's actually a bunch of custom things in here that don't come with Maya. Um, so you can select your mesh, go in here like you normally would. You could add remove influences. Um, this is export skin weights, so you can export your weights to a file. You can import them in and um, you can mirror, prune. This is a range of motion tool. So instead of having to kind of hand key a bunch of stuff to try to see how your deformations are looking, you can go in here and kind of set up your own range of motion. So I can select the spine joints. I can say solve as one item, which means that it's gonna rotate them all together. I want uh, 10 frames between each pose and I'm gonna start at frame zero. It'll tell me the current length of that animation is gonna create will be 90 frames. So you can see, now if this were a model, you could see that we could actually go ahead and tweak our weights from this. To clear your range of motion, you can either just select the joints and delete the keys or just hit clear all range of motion keys. And you can keep adding onto your range of motion and just changing the animation start frame, which will make your, your, um, your timeline bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can see that Initially, we have it selected. It says 270 frames. If we say solve as one item, it goes down. All right, so that's basically, uh, actually there's one more tool thing in here that's unique to uh, the animation rigging tool set. When you change your mode to select, um, there's a few selection tools I've put in here. Um, you can select element, so you can go ahead and select. This is really useful if you have, um, a very complicated model where the model's got a bunch of little elements but they're all part of the same object which isn't the case for this guy obviously. 
Um, you can go and select the vert select element. Uh, you can isolate that. You can isolate it either way. You can convert it to verts, go back to paint mode, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of some of the cool things that are unique to uh, our tools here. Um, in the next video, we're actually gonna get this thing kicked off to the animators.